Um, Recording in progress. Strategy was approved uh, by cabinet and published for public comments in July last year. And uh, we reached in excess of 2,000 virtual and physical participants. And it is enough that we will get approval by cabinet in this final, uh, uh, in this uh, early in this financial in the next financial year. And to date, um, 2,000 previously disadvantaged individuals have received accredited or non-accredited training on various SME development interventions. These are quite specialized uh, interventions that we have undertaken. And then we've also transferred 10 million to send packs uh, to support provinces and entities with game capture and translocation. And then the first, we also minister hosted the transformation workshop in October last year. And this is, um, we are now in the process of developing a transformation roadmap for the biodiversity economy, working in consultation with the stakeholders. And then in respect of standards and certification, we are working with the stakeholders, uh, especially in the wildlife industry, to develop uh, this uh, certification for wildlife ranches and game farms. This is funded through the UNDP Biofin, and it is funded to a total of uh, $215,000 US dollars. Next slide, please. So just to indicate on high level in respect of wildlife and ecotourism economy progress, um, the members will be aware that we run a people and parks youth champion progress. This is also through the uh, funding secured uh, through the presidential economic stu uh, stimulus. So uh, to date, a total of 1,889 youth participated in the program and 107 protected areas um, uh, is where these youth have been placed across the country. And then on core management agreements, uh, 46 core management agreements are in place, four for KZN, eight for Mpumalanga, eight for Limpopo, six for Northwest, uh, two for Eastern Cape, and 18 for Limpopo. And then 52 legal bodies have signed core management agreements, uh, which include CPAs, trusts, or traditional councils. Um, in respect of that. And then 34 protected areas uh, have core management agreements. And then in respect of people and parks, members will be aware that we've hosted the conferences since 2006, the latest one that was held last year in 2022. Next slide, please. Then giving progress on each initiative on the wildlife economy. Next slide. This uh, first uh, initiative was to identify and protest 10 million hectares for transformation uh, of wildlife. And on progress, 18.5 million hectares have been identified and mapped. And these uh, uh, maps on the right, the map on the right hand side then starts to indicate the darker areas is land-based protected areas. And the brown, grayish one, beige one is areas recommended for intensive wildlife economy activities as confirmed by the provinces. And the dark brown is areas recommended for intensive wildlife economy activities from the lab. Next slide, please. On initiative two, which is to coordinate the existing support mechanism under the wildlife support unit to efficiently support new entrants to the industry. On infrastructure, we've supported 76 emerging game farmers uh, in infrastructural development. Um, um, and then the activation of biodiversity infrastructure projects involving Mtaguini in KZN. Suile, Mavokweni in Pumalanga, Kalema in Free State, Kalema in Free State, Mazel Fontaine in Northern Cape, and Minga Crocodile in Limpopo has been completed, and the process is underway to appoint contractors to implement these five projects. And then through Sand Park's implementation process, six EPIP funded projects have been activated, and these include Dreamfast Mark in, in Northern Cape. Awelani in Limpopo, Vapirin in Northwest, Mahumani, Makuya, and Bedvula Gijana in Limpopo. Next slide, please. 
Initiative uh, two continued just to show uh, this is a coordinate initiative, it's actually initiative three, which is coordinated existing support mechanism and our wildlife support unit to, to efficiently support new entrants. We've also undertaken game donations since uh, 2016. In excess of over 3,000 game has been donated to date. Uh, you can see from 2016, 1,483, 2019 to 2025, 66. We couldn't donate any game during the COVID period. And 2021, 837. Um, and then and just to indicate that this has not been captured in the DFFE annual report. And then uh, this financial year to date, we've kept we've uh, donated 168 of those. So the cumulative uh, heads of game donated is 3,044. And as earlier indicated, we transferred the money to send parts to assist those management authorities in game donation. The map itself then starts to show you the game donated, uh, total number of game donated by each management authority. Next slide, please. Continuing on initiative three, which is about supporting 300 CPAs, trust and traditional authorities. Uh, when the white paper was released uh, for public comment, we had a um, focus workshop with these um, institutions in November. We also held a workshop on the game with strategy with the CPAs in September on the 23rd last year. Uh, 200 skills development interventions was um, undertaken in Smangali, so between July and September 2022, and 67 young people underwent an environmental education awareness between July and September 2022 in the Western Cape and KZN, inclusive of the 50 recruited as Rhino ambassadors through the Sand Parks program. And then the 80 community local entrepreneurs trained on, on tourism and venture creation in KZN and in Pumalanga during July to September 2022. Next slide, please. Initiative four related to creating supply chain linkages and capacitating 4,000 SMME, new and existing, to locally capture the value of ancillary goods and services to the wildlife economy. Over 80 SMEs have been supported to exhibit their product offering uh, in the following platform. The third biodiversity economy in Durban presidential launch in 2018, Mibalaya uh, Rona conference and the Roman Night auction also in 2018, Huntex in 2022, so is the Fire and Fish Meat Expo in 2022. And uh, we've earlier this year supported uh, SME participation in the Dallas Hunting Expo and also the sub Safari Club in, um, International Hunting Shows, which is currently take place uh, this week. And then through the Department of Small Business um, uh, Development Partnership, six MMEs operating within the game meat industry have been linked with ShopRite checkers for incubation. Next slide, please. This is initiative five, which is about in operationalizing living biodiversity economy nodes that enhance the economic potential of protected and non-protected areas. A five-star game launched involving AMA costs in Cositem and BLN in case the then province under um follows a big five reserve and Babanango game reserve were completed and these are fully operational with no less than 100 um, of community members employed. A uh, dev granted uh, 10 million uh, to Amakos to Nkosi um, Tembu and 20 million towards um, Nkosi Biela's project. And then a uh, Jeff um, funding amount of uh, 8.99 million US dollars was secured to support the operationalization of three biodiversity economy notes. Uh, which is the Kruger National Park, Ismangaliso, and Ado Amatole, and two coordinators are already appointed. And the process to appoint service providers to develop feasibilities for Babaton Makondra, Lost Cop, and Ismangaliso notes are underway. And the, the graphics just show you some of the projects that we completed. Next slide, please. On initiative uh, 
six, which is about empowering 4,000 emerging entrepreneurs and farmers through focus capacity building programs. To date, uh, over 2,000 SMEs have been offered accredited and non-accredited training. So as at 2022, uh, we have trained 35 in Ismangali, so Kruger National Park Golden, 35 in Kruger, also 35 in Golden Gate, and 35 in Eastern Cape, and 28 in Northern Cape on new venture creation training. And then ecotourism planning in in Gomalanga, 50 on them, of them, and business management training in Cape Town, 34. And on non-accredited training in 2022, in partnership with services CETA and Sunpark, 75 SMEs comprising of cooperatives and NPOs were trained in Golden Gate National Park and Kruger National Park, uh, respectively. And the graph just does to show you uh, the areas in which we train and the number of beneficiaries. Next slide, please. Initiative uh, seven will be on the next slide. This is about formalizing the game meet um, and to create a network of game meet processing facilities. So the strategy is now in the process of being uh, approved by cabinet. And uh, it aims to contribute to food security, job creation, conservation through sustainable use of wildlife and transformation of the sector where PDIs and communities will participate in the entire game meat value chain. We facilitated a series of uh, public consultations in the development of the strategy itself. We also hosted the GASI game meat promotion in Soweto in August last year to promote game meat consumption. And uh, also community gay own game meet abattoir within the Great Fish Nature Reserve is in the final stage of completion and it's funded through our DFFE EPIP program. Those are some of the graphics uh, to show the intervention on game meat. Next slide, please. Initiative eight, which is about implementing a campaign that drives participative transformation and consumer growth for wildlife services and uh, products. We have an investment, a biodiversity economy investment portal. This was launched to support SMME pipeline and bankable investment projects. The portal went live. It's an online portal in an official launch uh, on last year on the 23rd of September. And that is the link for the investment portal where we've loaded some of the bankable projects that we have evaluated. And also, the deaf communications team has also supported the social media um, and also through the LinkedIn and Twitter platform also. And then we are currently engaged in institutional and pragmatic uh, ownership of the portal from the service provider to hand over to the department. We've also engaged management authorities and entities to load uh, bankable opportunities on the portal. And there's also an appointed brokerage or a transaction advisor working on an investor engagement strategy for the loaded project, project and also to pro provide brokerage advice for any interest on the programs. Next slide, please. This is just to show how the portal looks like. So on the portal itself, uh, you would have the projects that have been loaded, that have been assessed. And the idea is essentially to connect investors uh, on the right-hand side of the screen with the investment opportunities on the left hand on the left side of the of the screen. And what we call uh, intermediaries are basically some of the NGOs and transaction advisors that will then link the investment opportunities to the investors. And largely, the management authorities are responsible for loading some of their project. Uh, on the investment portal. And they have been trained in that regard to ensure that their projects are um, investment ready. Next slide, please. Continuing on uh, initiative nine, which is about creating and enabling a legislative environment through amendment to NEMBA. I've indicated the fact that uh, once the white paper has been concluded, uh, this will trigger the review of NEMBA 
and the National Biodiversity Economy Strategy. And I indicated that we've already started to do a legislative gap analysis for NEMBA and initiated a process to review the Biodiversity Economy Strategy. Regarding initiative 10 and 11 on the wildlife industry standards and the branding scheme for the national wildlife economy. Um, so the, UND, the donor funded program um, on sustainability standard and, and certification scheme for wildlife ranches and game farmers is in progress. Uh, we've completed surveys on demand for certified wildlife product. And this has shown a very high uptake of over 7,000 consumers. And also we do have sustainability, sustainability standards which contain a criteria for certification that has been completed. And the establishment of the certification scheme is in progress. And the suggested name is the Sustainable Wildlife Economy Council. And the potential benefits of the certification scheme include, includes improving reputation of the wildlife sector, market access, invest in consumer confidence, incentive uh, conservation um, efforts. So we are in the process of getting approval for the scheme to be established. Next slide, please. On initiative uh, 12, um, which is on the electronic wildlife permitting system and centralized database. So the, the development of the TOPS and CITES permit system has been completed. This also includes uh, BAPS. And as I indicated, this uh, will be launched uh, on the 3rd of March and go live on the 1st of April. Regarding reposition of the Wildlife Forum as an efficient interdepartmental industry collaboration and coordination, plat coordination platform to promote the benefits of the wildlife economy, the revised terms of reference for the Wildlife Forum have been approved and the forum itself is in full uh, operation. And quarterly wildlife forum sessions or meetings uh, do take place on a regular basis. And this is where we discuss matters to focus on conservation and sustainable use. There's a re current representation includes 29 associations, nine management authorities, seven national department, and uh, members will recall that last week there was a recommendation that we also include the Department of Labor, and we've invited them to our next meeting. Regarding the develop development of an integrated knowledge evidence share evidence generating and sharing platform to support the wildlife economy. We have developed an MOU in partnership with the University of Venda, and this is currently going through the legal vetting process. And uh, similar MOUs will be entered with other institutions of higher, of higher learning in the near future. Next slide, please. Just to indicate that uh, to support this work, uh, Sanbi and Stats SA, um, together with us, we are working together to develop a first set of uh, accounts specifically measuring the biodiversity economy in respect of employment and contribution to the gross and, and development pro pro product. So South Africa is a wealth of biodiversity assets and ecological infrastructure. Um, that contributes to inclusive growth and development. And this helps to make the case for investment in biodiversity, including in managing and conserving the biodiversity and ecosystem assets that underpin the biodiversity economy. So what this economy, biodiversity economy satellite account will contain is that it will have product codes, it will also have industry codes, and occupation codes so that we can be able to classify each of these three categories so that we can then make a um, final determination in respect of the biodiversity economy contribution to the GDP, to employment numbers. And uh, with Stats SA on board with us, we're hoping that um, uh, in the near future, Stats SA will also be able to release biodiversity economy accounts for the country. Next slide, please. On ecotourism uh, initiatives, next slide. 
So this is initiative 15, which is about leveraging protected areas to unlock economic potential. And this is implemented through the People and Parks program and consists of five thematic areas. And the progress uh, below for quarter two was received from the management authorities as indicated them. On economic development, job opportunities is 614 uh, opportunities created. And uh, 466,000 uh, bundles of grass harvested with the monetary value of 466,000. 91 community members harvested broom and grass, estimated in 978 kilograms, and five grass harvesting permits have been issued. Three contractors harvested high firewood in Sitikama National Park, and 150 impala skins were also donated to eight local enterprises in Kruga National Park, and 850 kilograms of elephant meat was delivered to tribal councils in various areas. On restoration of land rights, which is the work that we do with Dal Road and the commission. So, and the CPA meetings and CMC meetings have been held. There's about 12 of them. One co-management agreement has been finalized. And in respect of the land claims that have been finalized, the proper land claim settlement process has been concluded. And the claimants have signed the settlement agreement and beneficiation package in respect of the properties that are claimed inside Golden Gate Highlands National Park. Next slide, please. Continuing on initiative 15 in respect of capacity building awareness and education, we've traded 168 uh, beneficiaries and undertook 106 uh, workshops and awareness campaigns. On co-governance, uh, provincial people and parks meeting, 40 meetings to date, and committee meeting or park forums, original meetings, 27 of them. On community stewardship, we've celebrated seven uh, calendar events, and then seven new registration for fishing, and 16 renewals were recorded in city Kama marine protected areas, and 34 catches were registered for the months of July to August 2022 and three public-private partnership opportunities were awarded to emerging uh, contractors and qualifying uh, contractors and affirmative enterprises, and one PPP opportunity has been awarded. Next slide, please. This is just to show some of the infrastructure interventions that have been made. This is Mvuba Lodge in the Eastern Cape, just to show before where the restoration was uh, under or the upgrade was done at the same not interpretive center and the cabins and the renovations and construction of ablutions facilities at Grassland Center and upgrading of the Davista facilities at Fresh River to include ablution facility and dry area. Next slide, please. This is Cape Morgan in the Eastern Cape. Uh, this included infrastructure development upgrade to the nature reserve. And this included construction of tourist accommodation, 32 sleeper bed units, and renovations and alterations to staff accommodation, and also alterations to existing exhibition hall and display room into restaurant and kitchen, and also external works, including paving, parking uh, spaces, and walkways. Next slide, please. This is Chivase Nature Reserve in Limpopo, and here was development and upgrading of infrastructure in and around the protected area, overnight visitor and staff accommodation, admin buildings and conference facilities, roads and fence within the protected area, and development of commercial assets for communities in and around the protected areas community-owned hospitality establishment, curios, tax shops, amphitheaters, and exhibition areas, and support to ancillary services and SMME development complementary to the protected areas, which included facilities and, and also for refuse removal. Next slide, please. This is La Khalamese Nature Reserve also in Limpopo. We completed the swimming pool, as you can see there on the graphic. So uh, this uh, included tourist infrastructure development and upgrade, which included 
over and above the swim pool, the bra area, roads, paving of pathways, completing the camping sites and shared facilities and laundry facilities also. Next slide, please. This is Masebenicha Reserve, which is also in the Popo. Staff accommodation and other tourism, uh, tourist facilities were upgraded. So these are single story uh, chalet, family chalet, about five of them in double story chalet, 11 of them, restaurant building, storeroom, laundry room, dry area, hostel block, and conference hall. Next slide. Just to indicate the partnerships uh, that we have in place, um, first one being with uh, and the MOU with the DSBD, uh, Small Business Development, which focuses on implementation of the three DEF PAKISA program, the Biodiversity Economy, Ocean and Coast and Chemicals and Waste PAKISAs, with uh, special attention to incubate, incubate respective SMMEs and meetings uh, continue on a regular basis. DFFE and DELRAD focuses on all branches within DFFE to ensure also alignment with uh, legislation. And then uh, DFFE with uh, Department of uh, Cocktail and Traditional uh, Cooperative Governance and Traditional Authorities, which focuses on all areas of mutual interest, including the National House of Traditional and Quasar Leaders. Next slide, please. These uh, next slide are just showing some of those uh, biodiversity finance initiative programs that are also contributing to unlocking the biodiversity economy value. We have about seven finance solutions. The first one was around growing protected area revenue and retention in four provinces. Um, he, in this particular case, this is in progress. We have developed drafted plans for four protected areas. We've done a score sheet assessment and uh, implementation is gonna be done by the provinces. This also runs parallel to the work or, or complementary to the work that we are doing on the biodiversity investment portal. And then regarding reform of property rates, legislation and interpretation and application to the PAs, we have concluded the assessment and uh, the study that we have done has indicated that 60 protected areas have uh, incorrect application rates. And we are current, we are working with Copta and Salga on this particular project and are awaiting their review of the outcome of that study. And then regarding the stewardship program, we have completed the value proposition and policy recommendation. Um, Part of this will also complement our work on the protected areas. And uh, the report suggests that about 100 million per annum is needed to catalyze the program. And this uh, particular um, project is currently under discussion within the stewardship working group. Um, on the biodiversity tax incentives, we engage national treasury. We've put this particular solution on hold because uh, from treasury, national treasury perspective, there was no appetite to continue uh, with the project under the fiscal circumstances that the country finds itself in. Next slide, please. The next finance solution related to the offset modality for protected area expansion. This, we have just uh, initiated this one. And this will also in, involve developing a digital offset register where a developer will then be directed in terms of where offset can be uh, realized for projects that they are implementing. And then on the certification scheme, which is the one that I reported on earlier on that we have completed the standards and the certification framework. And um, we have completed the business case and the demand study, and we are in the process of finalizing this particular project for approval. And then the investment uh, portal, I've indicated that this is already live and we are seeing interest uh, in respect of um, connecting investees and investors on some of the projects that are bankable. And the last one was on improving effective effectiveness of uh, permits, which where we are looking at the amounts that are charged for the permits. We have uh, completed um, 
the assessment of the current permits that we are charging and a policy brief uh, has been done. The earlier assessment indicate that about 7.5 million per year uh, is foregone revenue due to top permits pricing currently, uh, due to, to the current uh, mechanism that we are using for pricing. And then the top permits pricing currently is under review for the provinces to then uh, implement. This reg will also undertake uh, with the national treasury. Next slide, please. The last slide is just to indicate some of the abbreviations that we have used. Um, I think this is the second last night that we have used in the presentation. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. I invite you to engage the presentation. Honorable Paulsen, you'll be the first. Honorable Weber, you'll be the second. Proceed, Honorable Paulsen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and thank you for the presentation. Chairperson, in um, you said one of the, the one of the possible causes of or sources of the the, the COVID nineteen um, virus, which led to the massive pandemic and that the whole world shut down was possibly a zoonotic disease co um, uh, caused by uh, humans eating, I don't know, bats or whatever the case may be. Be that as it may, we don't know, could possibly be, could not. But, so I'd like to know, in, in allowing for the sale of wildlife meat, What is being done to ensure that wildlife meat is not contaminated um, with a disease, possible zoonotic disease, that could be passed on to humans? And then I'd also like to know, you know, so, so we're saying that this wildlife meat will improve the economic conditions of our people and, and uh, contribute to, to food security. And I'd like to know how, how much of this new, um, of this uh, trade in wildlife meat will benefit to working class black people who have not been able to go and acquire um, wildlife because we know when the department donates wildlife to um, these uh, game farms. So um, how many black people will benefit from this? And then also with the marine protected areas becoming a, somewhat of a, an attraction. Who are the operators who are able to provide um, tourist facilities? How much of those or how many of those operators 